Baby dolls, you have to know this. Back in 2012, Bitcoin pretty much was an altcoin back then. It did to the top 159x. You remember that? 159 times your money. But then if we go forward in time and we look at the others index, which is outside the top 10, I want to explore what that got in the next cycles. Because remember, back when Bitcoin was pretty much an altcoin, it did tremendous moves. You know, if you started from earlier in that, pretty much Bitcoin did a 1,000x. Let's look at altcoins though. In 2016, July here, you have the others index. This is outside top 10. Now, what I've done is I've gone to the Bitcoin halvening. You go down to after the Bitcoin halvening, the crash. Look how much altcoins end up going in the top of the cycle. Okay, 313x. Why is it that number? It's because it now includes Ethereum, right? But look at this. Back here, Ethereum was not on your radar. What was on your radar back then? Litecoin, Monero, those are and other old poopy coins that don't no longer exist anymore. They were on your radar. Ethereum was the new kid on the block. So Ethereum, the unicorn, gave a 315x. But if you removed Ethereum and you did the average coin of the top 100 or whatever 50 coins there were, the large caps at the time, you got about a 100x return. It's crazy, right? Isn't that, that's really, really nuts. You get 100x. So remember these numbers here. See these big numbers? See them? Let's go and see from four years ago, because what I've done is I've started at the Bitcoin halvening points, 2012, we just did 2016. Let's go to 2020, all right? Everybody was looking at these numbers, 100x, 300x, okay? 150x. Look what ends up happening after 2020. Here we are in May, all right? We are exactly from four years ago, friends. Bitcoin halvening around this point-ish. All right, look how much you get only. You only get to the very top of the bull market. You get a 27x. So you've basically divided by five. Now, this is really important. This others index, friends, <clears throat> it's, it's a bit of a trickery because the coins in here that are in the index right now, you're probably not even looking at them because they hadn't moved yet. You didn't know back then, Luna hadn't done its move, Sand, Mana, Phantom, they had not done their moves. They were true unicorn winners from the pack. Hex as well, they weren't included in the, in the index here. But as they went up, they did get included more and more. But still, that number, friends, is diminished big time. You see that we divide it by five? I know this number off by heart. I want to show you this. A big portion of why altcoins did this move is because of Ethereum. Ethereum did 50x from bottom to top. I made a literal video, maybe you remember it last year. I made a literal video going with you, explaining the real truth about the crypto gains from 2021. They all came from Ethereum. Everything was a multiplier on Ethereum. <clears throat> so Ethereum from the bottom to the top, the very, very bottom tick to the top, did a 50x. And I showed Sand, Mana, Luna, Hex, everything, doing a multiplier of Ethereum. So Ethereum did a 50 from the bottom to the top. And it's not taking these imaginary bottom tick imaginations from everyone else. But if you go to the certain times, you match them up around the Bitcoin halvening, everything got either 100x, 150, 200, 250, 300. I remember, I think Sand did a 400x. So you remember that's when Ethereum did 50. If you did 400, you got an 8x multiplier on Ethereum. Big. There are other coins out there that could not even barely beat Ethereum. They, they would only get like a 75x, which you pretty much are a failure. Because Ethereum did 50, you only did 75. So what happened? Well, the insiders were dumping so aggressively on the exchanges, they were just capping the rally. And you don't know until the end of the cycle, all right? Now, after seeing these, where are we today? Well, friends, we just had the Bitcoin halvening. Here we are. So yes, if we do a 27x, which we're not doing, the total 
altcoins outside of the top 10 goes up to 7 trillion. And look, man, I'll tell you right now. I, I know, friends, you're just looking at charts on lines going up. You go, oh, I did that before. Why can't we do it again? The answer is because the amount of inflation of the coins is known and calculated. Many people like GCR, Andrew Kang, all these other people, friends who are like big name Twitter influencers with like, you know, north of $100 million, they all have these numbers. They all calculate them. And they explain to people, that's what I'm explaining it to you as well. They, they get every single coin in the index and they look at all their unlocks and all their inflation rates. And they see that, oh, for us to have a certain number of price growth, well, based off the amount of inflation being minted, it's literally nearly impossible. The amount of retailers that you need to come and just stop the bid from being crushed is too much. And this makes sense, right? In another way, what it's basically telling you is market cap matters. That, that's another way. To, it's a very, very long-winded way to say market cap matters because as the amount of inflation from a bigger piece of the pie keeps trying to grow bigger and bigger and bigger, you need more and more people exponentially to cover their lifestyles. Now, the reason why we even think it's possible is because you have Bitcoin existing. Bitcoin's like, oh, you're just an inflationary coin that hands out. You are the Genesis coin. You are the first coin. You have the first mover advantage. That's it. All right? And nothing else in crypto has been able to really compete. But Bitcoin's dominance will probably go down over time. And everybody will find different use cases, you know, and Ethereum and stuff as well. So you're looking at this. Well, I want you to know this too, friends. You see here, even though this, this distance was 27x, I want you to know this, all right? The average altcoin, so average coin return from top 100 equals about a 10x. It was actually 7x, friends. The real one's 7x. If you measured from the bottom of zombie virus to the top, it's 14x. So I want, I want you to remember that. So if you go back to four years ago and you look at the historical snapshot, which I can do right now, you go through all these coins, friends, your return gives you about a 10x, okay, or the, the top 100. So obviously, you, you know a lot of the coins that have done really well. That's survivorship bias. You know them because they went up so much. You didn't know them before they went up. It uh, introduces a bit of a problem now, right? The coins that you and I are holding and that we know in the current index today, they are going to have a diminished return too. This is it. They're all going to have a diminished On average, friends, on average, there will be unicorns in here. There will be unicorns, you understand? I don't know which ones. I'm just telling you out of 100, yeah, top five are going to be great. But the middle 70 is going to be around the average. So we know that the average existing altcoins, they've only got about a 7x to go from the total industry. About a 7, you know. And it's not like, friends, remember, you go, oh, you're a genius. You're going to sell at 7. No, you're not. Or you're going to sell at 9x. No, you're not. Who's going to sell at 9x? At 9x, everybody's going to be saying we're going like another 2, another 3, another 2, another 3. No one's selling up there. It's very, very tough. But I'm just preparing you for this. So you have to be better than everyone else. You have to have a competitive edge, which is what we do. So this is the total of this index. So friends, it's very possible. This thing grows to 2 trillion or, or 3, 4 trillion. It's very possible, man, that this goes up here. There's your 9, 10x. That's pretty much it. All right. That's it. By the way, if you add this, this is, th remember, friends, this is excluding the top 10 up here. All right. Excluding. So that, what I showed you was a bullish scenario. And we get a Bitcoin and Ethereum total valuation of equal to like six to seven trillion. So if you add up what that, I just showed you that chart, that's 10 trillion. So I'm gonna bring it to you right now. Look at the multiplier from the very, very top, what it did last time. It did a 5.8X. Now it would be lovely if we can get another 5.8X friends. It's funny, it matched exactly up here, by the way. You see that? Isn't that crazy? I literally, this distance here, I did no diminishing gains friends. This is really important. All right, if we get this wrong, we're screwed. I did no diminishing gains. So I actually did. I, I don't care if this pisses anybody off. I did the most bullish scenario you can think of pretty much from crypto evidence that we've seen so far. I have done 
a multiplier over the high, which does not diminish, which has never before happened in crypto, by the way, never. We've always diminished. We always slow down. The market cap gets bigger, gets slower. So I, I've actually done the most bullish scenario where we don't diminish, and it is right there. So a non-diminishing part, you want to know the average, this is outside of top 10, friends, outside of top 10, 10, 11x. Really important. You're like, wait a minute. Is there only, that friends, by the way, but remember, once again, just to remind you, that average 10x is going to include the existing coins as crappy 6 to 7x, and then new coins out of the top, out of the top 100, they're going to fly and they're going to go really, really high. They, they, they don't exist right. They don't exist on your radar right now, but they're going to come out in the next 12 to 18 months. And these coins, there's not that many of them, but they fly really high. They're true unicorns. So you got to think about this. There are like, let's use an example. There are 80 coins that are the large cap trashy movers. 80 coins, they might do like a 7x average. That's the average. Some will do five, some will do nine, whatever. 80 coins. But then there's going to be like five unicorns. They're going to do probably like a 1,000x or 500x. They're on their way up already. And they're going to go really big. These five unicorns with the market cap of the existing ones, even though it's five coins versus 80, these five, it's going to drag up the total return up to here. It's going to drag it all the way up here. So if we map it out here, pretty much poopy coins currently existing on average, they might do this return, friends, or even less. They might just do this. And then the average is going to be here, but the unicorns themselves will be looking like that. So your average is going to be in the middle. Very important, right? That's why I tell you, hey, uh, maybe you want to confirm our friendship in the comment section. That's why, friends, I've got a very, very straight posture. I'm here to remind you, I... I wrote the book for you, man. This is how much I love you all, all right? The Baby Dolls and the Friendship Cult. I've given you the book and the formula. Now, I don't know which coins, duh, but I've given you the framework to look at. I found the patterns in the stuff that went up before. We found the patterns. Cycle one coins, cycle one narratives. They're the biggest ones. It's not so easy, though. You need to get a ch cheap price. You got to be in in a new sector, and there's no guarantee. That's absolutely no guarantee. But the market has thrown us a bone because restaking coins, okay, restaking, they're all VC insider grifts. They launch at 10 billion fully diluted. They've done like, you know, a thousand X return for the investors. You and I can't get anything. The insiders and the influencers all get their 30X, 50X, 20X. They're dumping on retail. Terrible people. We can't participate in that. What about decentralized penis? The physical infrastructure. They're sure, there are some of them, but I'm seen in VVV Launchpad and Paid Launchpad. Yeah, friends. Once again, it's there's VCs. That's it. They they're doing ICOs and stuff. They're not they're not releasing these coins out to the public for you and I to get cheap. What about AI coins? The real AI coins out there. Yeah, there are some nice winners, friends. Fetch, BitTensor, the unicorns, but a lot of them are. They go on the route of, hey, let's just launch at the top of the bull market. Let's do the VC inside of Griffs and the Razors. You seen a pattern here? You seen a pattern, friends? There is one savior, though. Can you guess it? Meme coins. Meme coins have product market fit. <clears throat> but not just any meme coin. You can't just go buy the top of someone else's $600 million fully diluted coin on Soylana or Coinbase after they've gone up. You just, you can't, you can't be like that blunt. You got to get meme coins with a soul. They have got to be cheap. You've got to contribute to the network effect as well. But hey, that's that's, it. that's you know yeah, you're gonna work five times as hard to get one fifth of the return that these people got just by buying anything back years ago. That's it. That's the game. That's markets. Welcome to markets. Okay, so the market has shown us there's a product market fit for meme coins. They are rev revolution against a revolt against the system. VCs, suits, insiders, poopy heads. All these grifters, right? All these people who promise airdrops and then they just screw over the community. Igon Layer, Starkware dog shit, Layer Zero, all these friends. All of them. Same category. You didn't care about the tech, no one cares about the tech. We need applications in there, applications with soul, which is pretty much you need to make you need to make a meme community around an application and everyone's gotta be great, but it's so hard to make the application itself. 
because people just copy paste it. So what's more important is to make the meme community first. So we're still early to crypto. We've still got decades to go, but it's going to be a while, right? So now I've explained to you the expectations we now see the rest of the market that I'm trying to basically tell you. If you can get from here a 15x, you've already done better than everybody in the top 100 because most likely they're only going to get a 7 from today. That's the average. There's going to be a lot of coins in that average though, man. They're going to they're be the twos and threes. Other ones are going to get tens. That's what I'm praying. Chainlink does at least a 10. I hope it gets to 140 bucks. I hope it does 20x up to $280. I hope that. Hope, friends, hope. We're hoping in Pulse Chain, for example, it's so low that by the end, yeah, we're, we're hoping it, it can go towards closer towards a 20, 30, 40, 50 plus rather than it just being a 10x from today. Just hopes though. There's many other coins you can go through. XRP people believe they're going to be the chosen ones. Doge people believe they're going to be the chosen ones. The, trust me, everyone thinks they're in the winning ones. But I've, I've just shown you right now, most likely these winning ones, not even on your radar or my radar. But we know that, man. We know that. Just That's the game. We know that. You don't need it to be, by the way, friends. You, don't, you know, there's a trick of just like increasing your position size. You know that. You only need to stress about this if you've got a thousand bucks in. That's it. If you have a thousand bucks and you like, oh, I've got to stress. Like, friends, you know, in, let's say, let's use real numbers. If you've got one week of living expenses invested in a crypto coin or a, an idea, you're riding on that the whole way. You're like, oh, this has got to be it. Guess what? Yeah, uh, 3% of you have uh, are going to do well. 97% or more are just going to get destroyed with that. But there's another thing you can do. You go, well, I don't know or even think my one's the unicorn, my selections, and I don't know which one the unicorn is, but I think I can increase my one-week expenses invested. I can increase it to one month or two months. Or three months. Now, suddenly, friends, if you're at three months, you don't need their unicorn rates anymore. You can accept a 12x less return. So if they're getting it a 240x, right, you can get, what, like a 12x? You get the same amount of money. But get, here's the thing, man. The fact that you know your field gives you more conviction and you can keep adding to it. So you can win in the game. Effectively, what you're doing is you're trying to see where you are on the risk curve, <clears throat> all right? And you know people are trying to hunt the riskiest stuff for that 1,000x. And you're like, you know what? I don't need a 1,000x. I can deal with 100x. And you go, oh, even 100x is hard. Okay, I'll deal with the 10x. You know, there are people in Bitcoin, friends. There are big funds right now. They are T-wapping, buying in $100 million worth of Bitcoin, and they're scalping out for like 11%. I'm not even joking. They are doing that. That's how pathetic it is. But that, that's what they have so much liquidity, money to move in. They have to do that. You see what I mean? So there, and by the way, Bitcoin is like the extreme risk curve for them because they're used to like bonds and currencies and all these other trading stuff, all these other traditional finance things. So everyone's along the risk curve. If you want high reward, you got to take a more risk. But then again, obviously, it, it's easy to fall off the cliff with that. That's why when you can identify things that the market thinks is too risky, but you have an edge, that's where it gives you big advantage. So friends, I'll play some nice, gentle, and music just to calm me down. Looking at this, friends, remember, this is a very bullish very bullish shot. This is literally a a one for one reflection, because yeah. Do, do you want to entertain the thought? You go wait a minute. If um, just to show you, friends, just to show you. Okay, look at this. You know, from this top to this top, four hundred and seventy x, and then this one was a basically a four x. You basically divided the game by a hundred. So that's too much aggression, right? But but. The reason why this this move even happens is because Ethereum. All right, this move was ETH. ETH went from zero to hero. Ethereum became the freaking industry at that point. That's why that move is so big. So, are, are we gonna get one? That's why you know I made videos last year telling you we're still waiting. Is there gonna be a new Renaissance technology that's gonna take over the game and pretty much introduce itself as you know some sort of unicorn winner? to do what Ethereum did, but so far, I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it. <clears throat> no, name me one thing, friends. You know they're all jokes. Nothing's a unicorn so far. But you never know, man. Someone can make something. Maybe it's out there, friends. Maybe it's some sort of social finance thing. I don't know. I don't know. Probably, probably not. Could be anything. They're too hard to guess. Only that one mad scientist actually knows what it is, and they probably don't even know until everybody starts using it. 
So after seeing all this information, friends, you're probably wondering, okay, what next? What next? What next? Well, man, of course, I don't know. But I've just helped temper your expectations in terms of expecting an enormous price point before euphoria of hits. So friends, I'm not telling you how high anything is going to go. I don't, I don't know. You know me. I don't know. I, I'm just telling you this is bullish euphoria, right, if we got there. But you don't know, man. Are you ready for it to stop here? What if it stops here, friends? What if it literally stops here? What if it stops here? And you want to know what that average index return is? The average altcoin here has done a 6x. That's very possible. The average has done a 6x. So if you've got an 18x in something, ha, you've done triple the index. But no one's going to look at the index because they're going to go, no, the index is useless because it includes Litecoin and EOS and all these other stuff. Yeah, that's why it's an index, man. An index, you can get everything. You're trying to pick the best ones. That's the whole point of it. But everyone, see, friends, that's why no one's going to get out. Like, what do you mean? I've only done 12 to 18, but that's from the low, and I deserve 50 to 100. I know, man. I know, friends. From all our pain, I know we deserve much more. I know. I'm just telling you, our biggest risk is not the products we hold. It's not. It's not the curvature of our back, and there is none. It's not how many ice cubes are in our drink. Our biggest risk are the soy boy virgin weekend cucks who are buying in with us. And right now, there aren't that many of you. There are a few of you, but they, they're not that many, okay? They're, they're fresh. There will be a point, maybe marked by Coinbase app ranking, going from 270 and reaching top 10 status. Hopefully, it hits number one, makes it very obvious for us. That might mark a point where you look around and go, oh my gosh, all I see are a bunch of market so market low selling losers who are going to click sell as soon as the first red candles appear and the bad news starts appearing in the media. That's what it is, friends. <clears throat> it's like you've picked a football team. You poke the football team, friends, and you're like, okay, I know you're the really slow one. You haven't been training all year. You see? It's the same thing, friends. You just It's a st sports team. But it's just interesting with markets because – the sports team open for all. And when you have a good team, everyone's strong, everyone's fit. But then it's like you have uh, you have an open sign-up. And then once you start getting too many fatties on the teams, how to use that term? I have to, Fred. Just, you know, too many people who just aren't fit to be maybe runners. Once we start getting too many of them, well, you know, all right, you don't want to be on that team anymore. That's crypto, man. That's not crypto. That's investments. That's markets. That's everything. You pretty much, that's the best way to look at it. Once you, once you start seeing too much unhealthy things around, which is marked by signs of euphoria, entitlement, greed, desperation, all of these, you get to see it. By the way, maybe racist coins is an example on Soilana land or recently. That's what he ran through the Nile. I know all of you holding Soilana. They're like, racist coins, that's the start of it, bro. I hope, it's a, I hope it's the start of it. I really hope it is. I hope it is because I want to just keep, I want these things to keep pushing up higher and higher and higher. I'm just, you never thought to yourself, hmm, Maybe Soilana coins appearing at the tail end of a five-month run-up only when every single mainstream YouTube influencer is talking about Soilana. Raul Powell's got 90% allocation to it, and it is now major market consensus to be in everyone's portfolios. By the way, 100% confirmed true. I made my recent video. You never thought, hmm, all of these things with racist coins appearing as a narrative, it, just, it doesn't... Doesn't ring any like alarming signs, like warning signs. It was, ah, it's fine. It's cool. Ultimately, this game, friends, is just a game of winners and losers. And friends, like you, make sure you like, subscribe, bell button, or catch you soon.